And we still hope maybe that uh, Nemanja can be ready uh, and Ander probably out, but Eric and Antonio definitely out, yeah. Ollie, I think... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Simon. <laughs> Ollie, I was just going to ask, Marcus Rashford was started the session doing some individual work. Yeah. How's his fitness? How, obviously, he had that ankle thing. Uh, he, he needed the extra warm-up, and hopefully uh, he won't get a reaction. He joined parts of it at the end, but um, he couldn't join the boxes, which is a fun, fun part of training. Uh, so let's see tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, he'll be ready. Ollie, I think we've been saying every week it's your biggest game. This probably is. How much of a step up is it, and how beneficial has the week been to prepare for it? Every game's the biggest game. The next one is always the biggest. But of course, when you when you get a Barcelona uh, with the history and traditions of that club, with the quality of their team and individuals, we know we need to step up our game. We need we know we we need to perform at our best level, um, which we didn't against the PSG in the home game. But uh, I think the outcome of the second leg has given players belief, supporters belief that. It is possible against the Barcelona team as well. Chris, as a defender, is facing Lionel Messi something to be worried about or something to enjoy? No, something to relish, I think. Um, I mean, this season, I've been lucky enough to face, like you say, Ronaldo and Beppe, and, and they're all challenges that I think I, I definitely relish, and I think players at this club relish, and um, no, I say bring it on. Can I speak in Spanish? Can you speak Spanish? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that that one? So yeah. we can. Uh... Hola, Ole. Eh, quería preguntarte, hoy nos sorprendió ver a, a Alexis Sánchez en el, en el entrenamiento. Quería preguntarte cómo estaba, si ya puede jugar o cuándo podría volver. Gracias. Yeah, uh, first training session today with the team. He's, do, uh, he's done lots of recovery work and is uh, uh, injury free. So now he'll, he'll step up, train with the team, probably in the squad for uh, West Ham on Saturday. And then let's see how much if he, if he plays. But he's not going to uh, be able to join in tomorrow. Hola, sí, señor Soljair, aquí Joan Poquí de Mundo Deportivo. Me gustaría, me gustaría preguntarle si uh, ha preparado usted algún plan especial para, para vigilar o frenar a Leo Messi. Well, what kind of plan can you have to, to stop one of the best players uh, in the world? Uh, I think we, as Chris says, we're looking forward to it, relish the, the, uh, the opportunity. But we, this season we played against Ju uh, Juventus, against Ronaldo, uh, PSG with Mbappe. Uh, we've had Chelsea and Neymar, you know, um, Hazard. Neymar didn't play against us. Uh, I think... The better an opponent, Suarez as well. Suarez and uh, Coutinho and uh, Messi, they'll, they'll keep our defenders on, on their toes. So let's see how we, uh, we manage tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Spanish? Okay, yeah. Just... Hola, mister. Yeah. Buenas. El señor Soskaer. Quería preguntar, uh, hay un jugador que, está, que es, ha sido muy noticia en, los últimos, en las últimas semanas, que es Paul Pogba. Hoy France Football publica en portada que lo ven con pie y medio en el Real Madrid. ¿Cuál es su sensación? ¿Cree que Pogba puede salir del equipo a final de temporada? ¿Confía en que se quede en el Manchester? ¿Le ven el Real Madrid? ¿Cuál es su sensación, señor Solskjaer? Paul is looking forward for tomorrow. He's a Man United player. He's the, uh, one of our, uh, of course, big performance on, on, on a big stage. He knows the game against PSG was not his greatest moment. So he is only focused on playing well tomorrow against Barcelona. And uh, I cannot see him not playing for Man United next season either. Mister. Spanish. Spanish again. Dani Hill para la I cadena Cope. Uh... Hace unos años Pep Guardiola cuando entrenaba al Bayern de Múnich dijo que el talento de Messi es incontrolable. ¿Piensa usted lo mismo? <laughs> you should ask Chris, uh, have you played against him before? <laughs> Uh, he is a fantastic player and he, he will go down in the history as one of the best individual players ever, I have to say. Uh, he will um, be difficult to stop, 
but it's never impossible. It's not like um, uh, it's Messi against Man Manchester United. Suarez, Coutinho, Rakitic, Vidal. Are, there's so many good players. We cannot just focus on on one player. Uh, we know we have to play against uh, 11 of them. Hi, Ole. Yeah. Um, you're in a period now where there's a lot of speculation around players, as mentioned, and, and unsure contract situations. In what way does that affect you and the squad? And uh, is it disturbing in a period like this? Not at all, because we're all focused on this game and contract talks uh, will will just go on with players later. Now everyone's just focused on the game tomorrow, looking forward to it, knowing that we can create a special atmosphere here. Like We played against... Not long ago, we played uh, PSG, disappointed ourselves. Then we played Liverpool. The atmosphere here was unbelievable. And of course, we'll need that. We'll need the crowd in a, in a game like this because that is something special. I know the gaffers spoke about it before and I've enjoyed those nights playing at Old Trafford on the knockout stage. Floodlights, hopefully a little bit of rain um, will uh, make for a special evening. Hi, Olga. Hey. You played Barcelona here in 98 uh, and drew 3-3. Ferguson said it was a perfect game of football. Do you think it can be a similar story tomorrow? I think there's two teams that do ca carry goal threats, of course. There are some uh, fantastic attacking uh, players on display, but then again, there's defenders there that are absolutely uh, quality. So we drew 3-3 three, three away from home as well. So uh, if we could get a 6-6 six, six and a penalty shoot, I'll let Nuke come. I think everyone would be happy. And then, um, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't say that these teams don't score goals. I think both teams have got their in, in them to score goals, and we we know we have to defend well against them uh, if, to to stand a chance, and we will. Chris, question to both of you. It's been a little while since Manchester United had a tie like this at the quarter-final stage of the Champions League. What does it mean to both of you personally to be involved in this sort of match again? Well, I think, like you say, you work so hard to to get into those Champions League places like last season and we're working now to, to obviously get third this season. And, and these are the ties that, that you look forward to and, and all the hard work and the group stage is, is what it's about. So um, we as players, we're, we're all itching just to, to be on that field and, and show what we can do. I mean, you, you talked about the belief that the, the, the win over PSG has given the team in this competition. Uh, bear in mind where you are in the league at the moment. Could getting into the Champions League, could your best bet be winning this competition this season? <laughs> we have given ourselves a great chance uh, to challenge for the top four positions with, uh, with the results we've had since just before Christmas. And no one would have thought that. Uh, now, of course, Champions League is, is possible. Uh, we, can, we can go on to win it, but we, uh, whoever's going to win this will have some luck, we'll have some margins, we'll have to uh, perform at the best. And I wouldn't say winning Champions League is easier than uh, becoming uh, top four. Uh, we're not that far behind top four now. Also, had some great tussles with Barcelona down the years. Have you tapped into his knowledge at all ahead of tomorrow night? Well, I think... Uh, all my uh, experiences and over the years with Barcelona, watching Barcelona, of course, ad admiring the team and the quality they've got, you've always looked at what will you do against them. So we're ready. And of course, I've uh, discussed Barcelona with the, with the gaffer since we, we came, went through and then draw uh, was made. But uh, nothing, no details really. Canil? Um, you said um, ahead of the PSG tie that you just wanted your team to hang in there maybe to the last 10, 15 minutes in the second leg. Yeah. Would that be the case with this as well? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Champions League, they throw up some, so many strange results. And last year they were 4-1 up after the home game. They lost 3-0 away to Roma. I think Barcelona, uh, more than anyone, uh, they they lost 4-0 to PSG. Then they won 6-1, did they? Uh, so... I think it's not going to be decided until we uh, we play 90 minutes in 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 the new camp, and of course, there's um, we just have to make sure that we perform to our best, and 
want to have a result to um, to bring over to uh, to Barcelona, of course. Uh, obviously, you had three losses in four games. Has the mood in the group changed? Question to both of you. And um, how is the confidence now going into this big game? Confidence is high. Uh, as I said, the uh, the result and the what we did against PSG and how we've climbed the table now in uh, like clawing back points. Uh, I think the players have given themselves and the supporters great uh, confidence and belief that we can can do this. Of course, games you lose games. We lost uh, uh, a couple of games that we should have won. The Wolves in the FA Cup, that's the one that we disappointed ourselves. But we won games that we maybe didn't deserve to win. So that's just, you cannot control the result. But the players, I can feel the tension, definitely. Excitement. Training today and yesterday, you know, uh, you can see that there's players there wanting to play. I felt the mood before the PSG home game was a little bit different. A bit more, because uh, we'd won so many games. I think now we've learned from that PSG game. Players have talked about it how we got dragged into making fouls, how European football is. You've got to be more, uh, how do you say, um, patient in, in your tackles because some, some of these players will, uh, will have some tricks up the sleeve, streetwise players, you know. So we've, we've learned from, from that game. Chris? That was a long, long answer, then you can do the short one. <laughs> Holly, with that in mind, you talk about them patience and tackles. I think you've got five players in your squad that would be a booking away from a suspension for the yep. return. How much does that play in your, in your mind then in terms of how you set the team up, how you, you get them to approach you know, this first leg? I don't think that. It doesn't matter if you get a yellow card. If you, if you, if you go for the ball, you go for the ball, and if you don't get it, it's a, and it, you get a yellow card, you should... Roy Keane was the best example on how to react if you if you know you're gonna be out of the next game. What he did in the semi-final before the final. But then again, we know we we can't give fouls away. How many goals has Messi scored? Uh, free kicks from just outside the box. So of course we've got to be careful. Of course the referees can't buy little little things. We weren't lucky with the ref against uh, PSG, where uh, they should have had a man sent off. So we just hope for some. Some luck there as well. Uh, Oli, you, you mentioned uh, Paul earlier not having a great moment against PSG in the previous game. Is this the kind of game and stage where you want him to inspire and lead like Messi does for, for Barca? Yeah, you know, it's not about one player standing. Everyone has to perform at the best level. But at Paul's best, he can run a game like this. And that's what you expect uh, for him, that he really puts his stamp on a game like this. Yeah, I expect Chris to defend really well. That's but that, that that's his job. Paul's job is to be um, the creator. The you know when we win the ball that he drives forward. So of course I expect him to um, to perform tomorrow. Okay, last two questions. One here and James. Buenos días. El el último sábado. El último sábado usted estuve en el camp no viendo el partido entre el Barcelona y el Atlético de Madrid. Eh, viendo aquel partido. Y considerando la eliminatoria, eh, ¿entiende que sería un buen resultado llegar vivos con un empate hasta los últimos minutos del partido del Camp Nou? Y para eso es trascendental eh, mantener al Barça lo máximo alejado de su portería en el partido de mañana. Of course, we want to. I thought Atlético Madrid played really well the first half an hour before they got the sending off. Um, but they've got moments of magic, of course. Uh, at any point of the game, you have to concentrate. So wherever we are, if we're just defending outside our box or if we're pressing high, you have to concentrate for 90 minutes plus the extra time. Because if you drop your concentration against these players for a second, you'll, uh, you'll get punished and they will create a chance. So um, it was nice. It was good to go there to see uh, live. It's always, always is. Um, and I know uh, that we uh, we will give it a go. Para para Ole, eh, tú coincidiste con Gerard Piqué eh, como futbolista. Creo que llegaste a coincidir en el primer equipo. ¿Qué recuerdo tienes de, de ese Gerard Piqué? ¿En qué crees que ha cambiado? ¿Y qué influencia crees que tiene en el en el Barça actual? Y sobre, y sobre todo, ¿por qué crees que no llegó a consolidarse en el en el United en ese United tuyo? 
Jed Hodge, I used to play with him. So, so I played, actually I played here in a reserve final at Old Trafford. I scored, Gerard scored. We won 2-0 against Tottenham. Kieran McKenna played. Our coach played in that game. So I don't know if that tells you how young I am or how old Gerard is. <laughs> it depends. You, you can translate that as you want. But uh, he was a fantastic boy. Um, he came to United as a young boy. We had lots of belief in him. Him and Giuseppe Rossi came together. Uh, he was maybe unlucky because he was here when arguably one of the best centre-back partnerships in the world with Rio and Nemanja Vidic played here. So he didn't get the chances that he probably deserved. So cultured, um, can, can read the game, great in the air. Very good uh, boy to have in the dressing room with always smiling, joking, great lad. He know, uh, I know he doesn't, he's not fond of needles, so maybe we should put a needle out for him. <laughs> Uh, I'm just happy to have seen how he progressed in his career and how many trophies he's won. And he's, uh, it'll, be, it'll be nice to meet him again. It's a few years ago since I've seen him. So, uh, but hopefully we could, uh, we can make him feel old and not me young. <laughs> Last question. Chris, the, the manager's talked about belief. I don't think anyone in the room thought you'd be sat here talking about a quarter final when PSG were drawn out the hat. You beat them. What did that do? He took the belief. What did it do about thinking that you should be here, you deserve to be here and you could spring another surprise? Yeah, I think um, we showed we showed what a collective and what the work that we've done over the last few months, the, it can result in, in performances against the best teams in the world. So we was all watching the draw before we were going out for training and, and when we saw it was Barcelona, you could see the smiles on people's faces because it's another challenge put in front of us and um, you know, we'll go head on. OK, thank Good. you, everyone. Thank you. Hasta mañana.